I started on this project with a simple question. Can you make a VRChat world in Linux? After all, Unity does have Linux-compatible versions of their 2019.1, which would have been a problem until recently where VRChat actually upgraded to Unity 2019. But VRChat still isn't natively supported on Linux, and the SDK might not even work. But it could be possible, right? After all, Valve's new Steam Deck is running their new version of SteamOS, a Linux distro that supports games using their compatibility layer Proton. Linux is in a perfect position to become the main OS for some gamers who want to get away from Windows. If Linux is good enough to run games, why not make them too? And so, I got to work. First step, I need a PC running Linux. I could have used a virtual machine on my desktop, but I had a different idea. I have a 4-year-old ASUS laptop and FX53VD. I don't use it enough, but on paper its specs should be more than good enough to run Unity, especially using Linux. The i7-7700HQ is a good processor, quad-core, 8-thread. Uh, I've got a single stick of 8GB of DDR4LP memory, which is fine, but I'm held back by the GTX 1050. Now, I'm not going to be running VR, but a 1050 should still give me enough headroom and unity to get stuff done. Alright, the hardware has been decided, but what about the software side of things? Linux isn't necessarily just one operating system. It's an entire ecosystem of operating systems to choose from. Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, Arch, Manjaro... It can be overwhelming if you don't know what to choose. Luckily for me, I already knew what I wanted. System76 is Pop! OS. See, I've always actually liked GNOME, and wanted to stick with that as my desktop interface. Pop! OS not only comes with GNOME, but it's also well integrated with it, offering features that base GNOME doesn't actually contain. It also has built-in NVIDIA drivers, so getting my 1050 up and running shouldn't be hard at all. That's the hardware and the operating system, but I'm still not done. I still need to pick my software that I'm using for this project. First up is Unity 2019.4.29, the current version supported by VRChat. Of course, I'm using the SDK3 Udon. I'm also using Udon Sharp for any of the scripting I want to do, as I prefer coding in C Sharp. And I'm using C and Emu to test the world. Now, normally I would just build and test because I prefer testing in VR chat, but that wasn't going to be possible in this project as you'll soon see. Now to write in C Sharp, I went ahead and installed Visual Studio Code. Alright, the prerequisites are done. I've written down some ideas on my whiteboard, and I'm ready to start working on the world. And I've immediately hit my first roadblock. Fun fact about Unity projects. By default, they're set to be built on a platform you're currently building on. In my case, that means my VRChat world was being built for Linux, which isn't supported by VRChat. Should be easy enough to fix, just go to your build settings and click on the drop down. Um, yeah, this is an issue. It happens every single time you attempt to change your platform in the editor. Unity shows a pop-up for building scripts, then hard freezes until the pop-up comes back again. It will never fix itself. Trust me, I tried. After literal hours of frustration, I figured out that you had to close Unity, then open the Unity Hub and change your platform before you open the project. You have to do it every single time, but it works. Time to get back to work. Time to familiarize myself with Unity's terrain editing tool, something I've never messed with before. The terrain editing tools are going to be the easiest way for me to make the map I wanted to make. Maybe a forest at night with a cabin and maybe even a bear somewhere. The entire world is built off free assets. I made exactly none of them for this project, save for a few images I already had on hand. It was a conscious choice to save on time and keep the project focused. It also has nothing to do with my blender skills being abysmal. Okay, maybe a little, but I think it was the right decision. I made a simple terrain, threw down some grass and some gravel paths, and a simple cabin. So far, so good.
this build and publish my world so I can test it on my desktop. Oh, look, another error. This one stumped me for a while. Shell32.dll wasn't going to work. Quick rundown, DLL files are basically just exe files that only programs can call upon and use. That's kind of an oversimplification, but let's just go with it. DLL and exe files are Windows files used for the Windows platform and not Linux. This poses a major problem. As far as I know, it's actually impossible to natively build a VR chat world on Linux. Full stop. Technically, I could use the Windows version of Unity using Wine, but I don't know how to do that, and there's no guarantee it would work. I could also technically run a virtual machine with Windows on it in Linux. But that's just cheating, because then I'm just using Windows. It goes against the entire spirit of this project. And that's it. I'm defeated. You can't make a VR chat world on Linux. It isn't possible. Well, that's mostly true, but notice I said make. We can't build on Linux, but we can still create on Linux. After I'm done working on the project, I can just transfer it to Windows and build it there. Just because I admit defeat doesn't mean I have to give up. Papa West could take me most of the way there. So it's time to get back to work. I added some trees and grass, found a bear I could use, threw it on a hill. The development went pretty smooth from here on out. This is a good time to talk about Pomp OS specifically, and I'll preface this with the fact that I am not affiliated with System76. Pomp OS quickly became my favorite Linux distro that I've ever used. I haven't actively used Linux since high school, where I was running Fedora on my old compact laptop. So take my word with a grain of salt, but man, Modern Gnome with Pomp OS's feature set was an absolute dream. The multiple desktops were just fantastic. I typically ran three of them. One with Unity and a file browser, another with Firefox, and the last with Visual Studio Code. One hotkey is all it takes to cycle between them, and pressing the super key, or the Windows key for us normal people, shows all of your desktops along with the applications open in the current desktop you're in. Especially since I was using a 15-inch TN display with a color space that feels equivalent to the original Game Boy, this was a feature that was absolutely incredible. Windows has had multiple desktops for a while now, but they're not nearly as accessible or seamless. Beyond that, the OS updates were super simple, the package manager was fantastic, auto-tiling was great and easy to use. It was one of the best workflows I have ever found myself in. If you want to try a Linux distribution for yourself, Pop OS is a fantastic way to start. As fantastic as Pop OS might be, however, my laptop was not. Specifically towards the end, my laptop was struggling to work on the project. I overestimated the GTX 1050. It's not good enough for work like this. It was beyond its limits and ran at almost 92 degrees Celsius at point. Keep in mind, I had actually cleaned out the inside of my system less than a month before taking on this project. I've also mentioned the screen, but oh my god. To this day, I have not used a worse display than my laptop. Even for a TN panel, the FX53VD has the worst viewing angles I've ever seen. It doesn't matter the display type. If you're even slightly off tilt, part of the screen's color will be off. There's also some really serious light bleed at the bottom of the display, and there's a noticeable amount of input lag. Not enough to make the system unusable, but far more than should exist on a system advertised for gaming. After four years, it's no wonder I use this system as little as possible. However, my laptop wasn't going to stop me. In almost no time at all, probably around 15 to 20 hours of total work, I put my finishing touches on the world. I had ambient music that would randomly shuffle, a dark forest with street lamps, and a cabin. Before I knew it, I was done. It's unpolished, probably broken, and full of free assets. But at long last, I had finally finished my world. I dubbed it Rampage Park, and it would soon be ready for visitors. One short file transfer later, I had the project open on my desktop, built it, published it to the community labs. It's done. If you have a VRChat account, you can play it right now. Technically, this project is a failure. I wasn't able to make a full VRChat world in Linux. However, I still learned a lot from this project. I finally took the time to learn the Unity terrain tools, which are insanely easy. I learned a good workflow on an entirely different operating system than I'm used to, how to work around its limitations, and how to fit two systems my tiny fold-out table that I use as a desk in a way that gives me just enough room to use both of my computers. 
my main takeaway from this project is that the future of Linux is bright. Truthfully though, I really enjoyed Pop! OS and the experience of creating on it. If I could switch to it, I absolutely would. The reality of the situation is, the issues I'm facing right now are not insurmountable. I guarantee other people with better tools and a deeper understanding would be able to develop on Linux full time for VR chat. I would love to see a world where players can choose between Windows and Linux, and with a new version of SteamOS on the horizon, the future is closer than ever. Thanks for watching! I hope you check out Rampage Park. With the upload of this video, I'll be uploading the upgrades to the world I've been working on. The cabin is now furnished, I've made some models for the spawn, there's some expensive post-processing, and there's a background music toggle. I changed a lot about the map, and I even included some little secrets. Come check it out in the community labs. It's PC only, but after I work on compressing the world size down, I would like to upload it to Quest as well.